everyone. Corey Barker here with PhotoshopMasterFX.com. Now, I want to thank all of you for checking out the new site just this past weekend. It just launched on Friday. Kind of a soft launch. I haven't really given it a, the biggest roar yet, but I just wanted to thank you all for checking it out. And I appreciate any feedback you might have if you uh, come and check it out and uh, just go to the Ask Me section and let me know what you'd like to see on the site uh, in the coming months. Because a lot of stuff I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be posting new items every week. So be sure to check that out. Um, so here on my YouTube channel, I just wanted to go and give you guys a, a free little tutorial today, um, similar to what the, the kind of things you'll see over at the Photoshop Master Effects website. But I just wanted to show you this quick little design trick using abstract elements here. I've got this simple stock element here that I want to use as a framing element for a photo. Now, what I need to do, of course, is take this and extract. I want to take the shape and extract it from the background of this image here. It's obviously a flattened document, as you can see in the layers panel here. And, uh, and another thing is it's completely the wrong color. But as I've talked about with textures and abstract items, that doesn't matter. We're in Photoshop. We can change the color anytime we want. But it is the, um, the, the edge detail and the actual texture inside of this pattern that I really liked about this image, and that's why I wanted to go ahead and use it. So I'm going to go ahead and get my channels panel open here. I've talked about the channels in my selections primer over on the, on the website. And we're going to use an old-fashioned channels technique here. I'm just going to go in and toggle through, looking for the channel that has the detail I want uh, to be able to translate into the image here. Now, the green channel has a good amount of detail, but in, uh, it does have a little too much detail that I want, especially here in the, in the middle area and such like that. But the blue channel looks about right, with some adjustments, obviously, but, um, but right off the bat, it looks like it's going to be the best bet. So I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate of that blue channel. And I'm going to go ahead and press Command-I, and that's going to invert the image so I can see what kind of detail I'm looking at in an inverted state. And we'll go back to that. Uh, the original state is command I once again. So I'm going to use levels to make an adjustment here, and really darken up that center area. Notice I'm pushing the shadow and midtone sliders in here a little bit, almost getting the similar type of detail we had in the green channel, but not quite as much. I do want to maintain a good amount of the detail in here, but I want to be able to see the image that I'm going to put in this uh, layout as well. So let's brighten up now. Let's leave that alone. So. I think I like that, so I'll go ahead and press Command-I, let's just see. Um, with it inverted, it gives me a good idea of the live areas in this image, so I can see that I need to lighten up quite a bit here. And let's just go ahead and do that. So there we go. So i got a good amount of the texture still in there that we're going to use, and I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a selection based on this channel. Uh, a couple ways you can go about doing that. You can uh, just command click right on the uh, channel icon itself or uh, go back to your layers, create a new layer, and then simply go to the select menu and choose load selection. Layer one. Or actually, no, we want to do blue copy is what the channel we want to use. I'll click OK. Now, we have an active selection of the abstract shape area. Now, what I want to do here is actually create an, a frame out of this. So... We're going to do select inverse, and then I'm going to fill the selection with white. So I'm just going to press shift delete, and we'll set white as the contents, normal, 100%. There we go. Now, if I turn off the background layer, you can see what we've got now is we've got a basically a frame uh, made out of this texture. Now, if I put another color, now you don't have to do this if you're following along, but if I um, put another layer behind it and fill it, you'll notice we still have some of that area of the texture still visible in here. We can't see it on the transparent background, but we can still definitely see it's there for our image. So I'm going to go and create a new document. And this is what we're going to build our final design in. So notice it was 1700 by, or 1700 pixels wide by 2400 pixels tall. Now the image I want to actually use here is this surfer girl right here. And it's again, this is a stock image. So that I'm just going to go ahead and take it as it is and drag and drop it on over to the working layout here. Let's go ahead and take our framing element. And let's go ahead and bring that layer over as well. And I'm just adding the um, shift key as I drag and drop so it lands in the center. Uh, let's go ahead and bring our other elements into play as well. I've got one more thing, and that is a texture that I want to be uh, the, the base background for this. So um, I actually got this. This is from Photo Art Textures. Uh, pretty nice, just kind of parchment paper-ish type of uh, texture here. So that I'm going to go ahead and take, and again, drag and drop over. Once again, adding the shift key as I do it, so it lands in the center there. 
All right, now we got to rearrange the layers here in the layers panel. For, of course, we need the framing layer at the very top of the layer stack here. The texture we want to put below the subject. And I think that looks good. All right, so let's go ahead and scale the texture to fit in the area. And um, just put it in free transform, press Command or Control T. And then I'm just going to option scale it to fit in the, in the document here. And uh, we've got our frame layer. I'm actually going to scale that up. It's abstract, so we can get away with distorting it a little bit. Don't go too crazy with it, but... And I think that looks good there. And with my subject layer, I'm going to go ahead and scale her <clears throat> to fit right inside here. Let's go ahead and... Let's actually go ahead and get her right in the composition the way we want it. Or something right about there, I think. And looks good. All right. So now we need to do a little processing here. The first thing is on the subject. I'm going to turn off the uh, the framing layer for the moment. Um, the subject layer, I'm going to give it a little bit more of an almost an illustrated look with a technique I use quite often. It's really quite simple. Um, the first thing is to go under the filter menu and go down here to texture and choose grain. Now inside of here, you're going to set the grain type to speckle. And then the intensity and contrast, you just really got to kind of play with them. Um, you know, the intensity obviously gets it really dark when you go too high up here. I don't want to get that intense with it. Let's keep that at around 10. Contrast, you want to keep it a really low number. I mean, zero obviously has little effect, but we'll keep it at around five, I think. And I think that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and click OK there. Now you're going to go to filter again. <clears throat> and this time go to artistic and choose poster edges. And this is going to add on top of that effect. Now, it looks like it's going to be too intense, but that's okay. Go ahead and leave it as it is. Um, notice what I've got, the settings here. Um, thickness of two, and you can down, turn that down, dial that down a little bit if you want to. It really, in this case, didn't make a whole lot of difference, but. <clears throat> and the edge intensity at one, and the posterization in the center at around three. And then you're going to click OK. Now, the very next thing you're going to do is go to the edit menu and go to fade poster edges. This is only available after you've applied the, fil the filter. And what we're going to do here is blend this via a blend mode here. So I'm going to change the blend mode of the filter. Now again, this is the filter being applied, not the, the image blend mode we're changing, but rather the filter <clears throat> and how it interacts with the image here. So you can see different blend modes have different effects. We're going to go ahead and do a soft light blend mode here. And let's go ahead and drop this to around 75. And there we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to intensify that even more so by duplicating the layer. And let's take, take that layer blend mode for he, for this one and change it to multiply. And it gets darker, but it also gets a little too oversaturated. So I'm just going to go ahead and press Command or Control U on that duplicate layer. And let's just bring the saturation down to about negative 25. Still looks a little um, saturated. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to go and bring the layer opacity down. And we're going to adjust it even uh, more in just a moment with something else. Now, notice when I turn the texture layer, the framing texture layer at the top, how that texture that's uh, that we couldn't see earlier, how that's kind of showing itself through there, adding to the effect, and it's also toning down the image behind it as well, compensating for that oversaturation just a little bit. Now, remember that texture we had back here? Um... Turn off all these layers. This texture back here. I'm going to go ahead and darken that up just a little bit. It's a levels adjustment. Let's push the midtones in a little bit there. Make it a little bit start. It's already got this kind of natural vignette effect going on. So we're just intensifying that. And we're going to go back to these layers here. Now, the original um, subject layer here, I'm going to change the blend mode of that to multiply. And when I add this layer on top and turn these layers on, you're going to see it gets a little bit more... Um, dialed down, and we're actually seeing the texture coming through a little bit um, through the surfer image here, and that's because of the blend mode we're in. But if I wanted to keep the attention and detail in her face, instead of going back to normal, you know, basically what you do when you're, mul when you're going to multiply is you're remo removing the white point of the image here, allowing all the light areas to show through. But if we create a new layer underneath that active layer, and you can just do that by holding down the command key when you click the new layer icon here, and then Go and get the gradient tool, 
In the options bar, set your gradient to foreground to transparent, which is the second one here. Press D, then X to set white as your foreground color. And then finally, up here in the options bar, just down from where we selected the gradient, set the opacity to around 75. And then we're just going to add a few radial gradients right around the face area and in here in the body area. And you can see it's kind of covering that texture, bringing back that detail, but only in the areas where we want to see the detail of our face. Otherwise, we're actually seeing the texture kind of bleed through that image there. And if we wanted to do it even more so, I'm going to go ahead and create a layer mask on the surfer layer. And let's go ahead and mask away parts of that image. We can see the texture a lot clearer through there. And that's giving us that cool element there. Now, one last thing I'm going to do here is back on that texture, the frame, abstract frame here. I'm going to double click on that and open up the layer style panel. And we're going to add a drop shadow. Now, what's different here. Now, first thing is I'm going to go ahead and click on the color picker. And let's go ahead and just sample a rather kind of dark area of the image here. Kind of a darker yellow. And you'll notice I've got the come blend mode set to color burn. Now notice what this is doing. It's actually kind of compensating for the desaturating that this texture is doing here. And by adding a drop shadow effect in this way and putting it in color burn mode, notice how we're intensifying that color a little bit more. Probably would have never thought of using drop shadow to intensify the color. And I honestly didn't either. This was actually a happy accident when I was originally doing this, but it turned out to have a really cool effect based on uh, the amount, uh, the little bit of the texture that's there. And again, this is a drop shadow layer style, so I can go back and modify it and change it anytime I want if I wanted to do that. But ultimately, there we have our really cool framed ad background. We can go in and add text or products or anything like that, but just a really cool, easy way of getting a cool framed element or taking an abstract shape and creating a cool framing element out of it. Oh, you know what I'm noticing? I can see my edge of my image right down here at the bottom. So I'm actually going to go and select that layer mask. Let's bring the opacity back to 100% and just mask that area there. Remember that we've got it on two layers here. So we'll put another layer mask on the other layer here and just clear that up. There we go. But there you have it. So pretty cool, easy way of taking an abstract shape and making a really interesting framing element out of it. So hope you enjoyed that. Be sure to go ahead and check out the new site, PhotoshopMasterFX.com, and uh, see all the new courses I've got going on there. And again, as I said, I'm going to be posting new courses every single week, a new project every week. So be sure to tune back in and see what kind of new stuff we've got coming up there on PhotoshopMasterFX.com.